Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of my Two Sleepy Spaniels in Pastel. This was a lovely commission to work on and I've used pastel matte paper for this project along with soft pastels, mostly unisons, and Faber-Castell pit pencils. If you like my videos here on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to see the full tutorials that will come from this footage next month over on my Patreon channel, you can find this and lots of other full length tutorials there. Enjoy the video. So as always, I start with my background. I want to get that laid in first before making a start on the two dogs. And I spend some time layering up some colours you can see from my photo reference that I've decided to exclude all of that red. It's very overpowering and I decided to try and choose a neutral colour but still try to create a little hint of the fact that they're lying on a sofa. So I, I like the curve of that in the foreground. But I really neutralised all of that red. And I think it helps that both dogs stand out actually. I just didn't feel that the orange tones from the, the brown dog suited the red. But now I'm onto the two dogs. And I use mostly the big sticks, uh, unison soft pastels to do most of my blocking in. I've used a little bit of the black pan pastel at the very beginning, but a lot of my blocking in is done with the bigger sticks. And I just love the strength of color that you get from the big sticks. After this, I do come in with pastel pencil and add all of the finer details on the top. So I've got a lot of these speed painting or time-lapse videos here on YouTube and you can learn quite a lot from them but I know it's good also to see some real-time footage. And do check out the other playlists on my YouTube channel as I have lots of full-length uh, free tutorials on my YouTube channel for those who can't become a patron over on Patreon. But it's thanks to those guys, I want to say a big thank you to those guys for helping me upgrade my equipment and make the quality of these videos much better. I'll add links to uh, my Patreon channel where you can access all my full length tutorials and photo reference so that you can work along with me. I'll add the links in the description below. It's been a real thrill to see so many of my patrons work as it progresses and as they learn new skills and take their work in another direction. It's been one of the nicest things about starting a Patreon channel. Almost 300 patrons over there now, all learning uh, pastel techniques as well as gaining just general art uh, business advice as well. But I love to paint animals. I've been surrounded by them my whole life. And to paint other people's pets is one of my favourite jobs. And especially when you get given really beautiful photo reference. I absolutely loved the pose of the two dogs. It's not often that I get to paint sleeping dogs. And I thought that it might speed me up a little because there weren't four eyes to work on. And those areas around the eyes did become a little quicker. But there was so much fur in both of their faces. A really highly detailed photo reference. And when you can see that amount of detail, it's very difficult to ignore it. So I really spent a long time on both of their faces, building up the texture of the fur. And it's a similar method every time I paint anything really, whether it's a nose or the fur, or I'm painting a landscape. Blocking in the darks working up through the mid-tones until finally at the end adding the highlights. It's very similar to uh, the technique that you would use to paint in oils, only the obvious difference being it's a dry medium. But very similar method of building up your layers of colour. And on pastel matte I find it's great because it holds lots of layers of colour 
especially here on this area of the dog. I'm not really blending very much, just using lots of thin lines following the contour of the shape of the dog. And adding the highlights where it's needed. So when you're painting white in particular, you're trying to really limit your use of pure white. Look for all those other colours you can see reflected. There may be pinks or peaches, light lilacs, light blues. And really try to save your pure white for the areas of the white fur where it's been hit by sunlight. And that's a great trick for trying to create a 3D appearance or create the effect of sunlight convincingly. So really try to limit your use of pure white. And now onto the curly ear. I love painting curls. One of my favourite types of fur to paint. And next month on my Patreon channel, this will be what I'll focus on. I'm going to tackle curly ears, spaniel curls. A very useful thing to learn for lots of different dog breeds. As well as other animals, of course, too. A lot of the techniques that I've been teaching so far have often used dogs as the main subject. But I apply those same techniques across the board, whether I'm painting wildlife or pets or even farm animals. So it's all very much the same techniques. Always working dark to light. I'm using the big sticks as much as possible, but it's lovely to come in towards the end and add those final flicks and little fine hairs using the Faber-Castell pastel pencils. And they're absolutely great on pastel mat. You can use them combined with your soft pastels. Most pastels will mix nicely together. Um, you can use pastel pencil, pan pastel, the soft pastel sticks. Here I'm actually using a harder Faber-Castell black stick. And you can see me pick that up quite often throughout the painting. I use a little bit of a harder black on my first layers. I find it doesn't fill the tooth of the paper up so much. So you can really mix and match with whatever pastels you've got to get you going. People often remark on how many pastels I have, how many colours I have, the choice. But I did start out when I first found a love for pastel. I did start out with uh, student grade, cheaper pastels and a very limited colour selection. It was enough to get me hooked, but it certainly didn't help me progress into a professional artist area until I invested some money in higher quality materials. But whatever you've got, it's fine to get you started. My biggest tip if you're getting started in pastel is to invest a little bit in a decent pastel paper. They're not cheap, but at the same time, it's going to make a huge difference to your first attempts with pastel. It's going to allow you to do all the things that you need to be able to do. If you're using a paper not designed for pastel, you're going to find that it doesn't catch on the paper very nicely and it gets very muddy and messy. So the main key thing is to get yourself a decent pastel paper. I highly recommend pastel mat or the velour paper that I also love to use, but pastel mat's a great one if you're just starting out. Not too much tooth to deal with on the paper so it doesn't have a rough texture and it holds lots and lots of layers. You can see how much fine tuning I can do. I can add such uh, small tweaks and details. But the scale of these dog's faces is quite big. This is 16 by 12 inches. So there is really lots and lots of room for detail. If working a little smaller, I probably wouldn't go into quite so much detail as this. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing the progression of these two gorgeous pups. Do remember to check in with me again and hit subscribe so that you get notified when I release new videos. And until next time, thanks for watching.